Moving to the City uh, Asbury Park Council meeting. We'll move right on to City Manager's report and issues raised at prior meetings. Special events, Alicia. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application before you is the Run for Arts 5K on September 16th. Next is the Oktoberfest, which would be held October 6th through the 9th in Press Plaza. Third is the Zombie Walk, which would be held on October 7th. And lastly, we have a wedding on July 23rd at 6 p.m. on 6th Avenue Beach. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Review of agenda items for this evening's meeting. There's uh, only a few resolutions this evening. Resolution 229 is the temporary budget appropriations, which is, we know is standard until we receive our final uh, transitional aid numbers and you can sign off on the budget. Resolution 230 is- that, is, that a, is that a typo? Madison Marquette Police? Seven hundred fifty thousand, one hundred fifty thousand should be seventy-five thousand. How much is it? it says seven hundred fifty. That's a typo. So it's it seventy-five. Seventy-five thousand. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Resolution twenty seventeen two thirty is a, a payment of bills. Two thirty one is a sewer account credit. Um, two thirty two is as you just heard the special events application. Resolution 2017-233 is establishing the budget, budget committee um, for the city. You'll notice that this resolution has been changed. The changes have been requested by our state fiscal monitor. Um, you'll see those in yellow. Resolution 2017-234 is supporting a brownfield remediation at the firehouse. There's contamination, quote unquote, listed under the, at the firehouse. Um, which we believe is off-site. This is, the DEP is requiring us to clean this up. Um, the DEP is, has said that we're eligible for a hazard mitigation discharge grant fund. So the cost will only be 25% to the city. 75% um, is paid for from DEP. Um, this is a DEP thing that they are making us do. Um, it's the same project process as the LSRP at the DPW site. Um, resolution 2017. I, I, question, yes. Michael. It keeps saying for the last, I don't know, since 1996 that they believe it's coming from an off site location. Yes. Have they identified where the off site location is? Gas station across the street. The gas station across the street. Um, and also, part of this is that in the that time, the city removed the underground gas storage tanks but never cleaned, never cleaned up the paperwork with it. So, we contended to DEP that this is not ours because we've been clean for 20 years. They agreed after much discussion and Tim Cunningham and our state fiscal monitor were also involved in this. It's the gas station across the street which makes us eligible for the grant. So what, what happens with the gas station across the street? Or they have to clean it up themselves. Whenever they do a development, they have to clean but it up. Is, is DEP gonna go after them to do the work? Because if we clean it up and it keeps seeping over, that's part of this process. Are they closed? Is that gas station yes. closed? Yes. 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 But the landlord is still maintaining the property? Yes. Or somewhat? Someone's, someone's maintaining the property. Okay. Well, so, it's the, crappy. so the DEP is going to go after the landlord? Yes. Okay. And it's, it's not the current owner because I believe that's changed hands a few times. So it's actually the, the, the person responsible. So that makes it much more difficult. But quite honestly, I'm only concerned about the firehouse at this point in time. Uh, because the site across the street has been identified from the Brownfields Committee for the EPA grant as a potential site. So there's other options there for us to push forward with a cleanup to redevelop, redevelop the corner. But right now, all I care about is that DEP said, do the firehouse. We said we can't pay for it. We said this is not our contamination. This took two months. They said, yes, we'll pay for it. We're going to expend not that much money. As much as we say the gas station across the street, it's called a service station because they haven't pumped gas in a good decade. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, 235 is the word of a contract for the operation of the concessions for the stand-up paddle boards at Deal Lake. And resolution 236 authorizes a change order for the Springwood Avenue Park um, for suburban engineering to do additional design for the plantings and tree money that we received from the conservation, Monmouth County Conservation. Um, and this also includes a flagpole. That was my question. How much design work is involved? Uh, put from, a tree here, put a tree here. Well, it's a little bit more difficult because we, then they have to change the as built because under the agreements with Monmouth, Monmouth County Open Space, they require as built and any changes. So they would have to redo the as built, which is another thousand dollars or so. So it's not just as simple as put a tree here, put a tree there. It's existing conditions. It has to be out to bid because we're over the $40,000 vegetation amount for the year. So that it's a bid process where they then have to run the bid process. The plantings, it's, it's a day. But then we have to revise the as built as part of our agreements with Monmouth County until the project's completely closed out. So. Okay. At this rate, we'll win another award for the same park. Um, there is six ordinances for second reading. Earlier today, I was at the local finance board, and for the bond ordinances 28, 29, and 30, the local finance board first thanked the thank the mayor and council for all the good work that they've done. Um, they thank the city clerk for getting everyone to complete their financial disclosures. Um, the municipality that was before us still had 11 people and DCA said, we know where they are, we're gonna start finding them. And it's a $20 a day fine, I believe, or $5 a day? It, it's up to the finance board. So they're going after people, but thank, you know, thank everyone for being in compliance. Um, finance board, we were there for literally a minute and a half. It took me an hour and 10 minutes to drive for a minute and a half hearing. Um, they approved everything wholeheartedly and thanked everyone for moving the city forward with these projects. Um, the first one is for parking utility improvements. This is new parking meters. Um, the amount in the in authorized is $1.5 million from the parking utility. There's no tax dollars here. Um, we have cash, but we want to maintain cash flow and we'll probably pay this off within two years. Um, we can pay this over time because this year's, this year was the last year of the previous bond, so there is no budgetary change, but we do have some cash that we can actually make a big dent in this. Additionally, as I believe I previously mentioned, these parking meters will be more affordable on the credit card processing, um, where we'll save anywhere from 50 to $70,000 on the credit card transaction fees because of the merchant's accounts and obviously we're gonna save a lot of money in um, maintenance because we're spending close to $150,000 to $200,000 now in parts and materials. These will be new. So we'll see significant savings in the parking utilities by upgrading these meters. The sewer utility, um, again, it's a self-liquidating utility just like the parking. This is Ordinance 29. This is for $500,000 in uh, sanitary sewer improvements. Right now we're gonna hold on to the, some of this money. Um, t and is almost done with their design for the sewer upgrades at Springwood and Memorial. And then anything else that we have extra, we're gonna continue um, relining sewers throughout the city that are in disrepair, probably looking at Bridge Street next. Lastly, there was a, the city received a grant of 300, 000, roughly $300,000 for repaving of Heck Street. So we're authorizing 1.65 million. This, if we go through a full-fledged bond process, which we won't, um, is a $17 increase on the average house. Next year, we are anticipating a two to $300,000 reduction in our debt cost, which we'll, we'll absorb with this, so there technically is no increase for the taxpayer because of this, this bond, um, this, this capital ordinance. Additionally, when you do a capital ordinance, you can fund it through either a bond or a note, and for the first three years of a note, you only pay interest. So if we do want to make payments, we can really just start paying down interest and still see no tax increase due to these, these three activities. Um, the Ordinance 31 changes the terms for Sunset Lake Commission to comport to a calendar year. 32 is a handicapped parking spot. 33 is um, an air easement at 700 bangs. And 34 establishes the one-way street at Street. 
which had been changed from the previous meeting to go in the other direction. That's all. Any questions? I don't know. I get confused with East and West. I, I think it's you would have uh, matters by the city council. I don't have any matters, but I'd just like to remind everyone that on Monday nights, there's free concerts in Springwood Park. And on Thursday nights, free concerts on the boardwalk in front of Robinson's Ale House. Uh, just a reminder that this Saturday at 11 o'clock, there is an expungement at St. Stephen's Church. And there have been some changes in the expungement laws. So people who were not eligible in the past may be eligible now, and we're going to have a special session updating you. So anybody that's interested, please attend Saturday morning, 11 a.m., St. Stephen's Church, Corner Prospect in Springwood. Um, let me just see. A couple things I had on my mind, but I, no, I'm going to talk about them now. Mike, is it possible that we can, uh, Tighten up on security upstairs going towards your office when you come down the corner until is it possible we could put it like a buzzard or have somebody buzz people in? The plan is after the generator is installed because that okay. was tied to the capital ordinance from last year. Um, once the generator is installed, which we're looking at a September date, that's when we start moving to the security enhancements of everything. So we're looking at September, October for design um, and installation probably by the end. That's all. Thank you. Nothing. Okay. And I'm going to do this every two weeks from here on out. I'm going to ask the city manager, I gave him a forewarning, to give us an update on the street paving throughout the city, be it uh, Park, be it Fourth, be it Sunset. And the ones that scare me right now are Sunset Avenue. We started several weeks ago and it looks like we've made two weeks of progress or two two blocks of progress in three weeks and at that rate we're not going to be past the high school by the time school opens so i don't know what the problem is and then fourth avenue was supposed to start on the 14th and i see it now it's passed back to the 19th and i don't want to be sitting up here come december saying why can't we plow fourth avenue because the streets ripped open and it's snowing out so and I know you sent us all an update, but I'm going to ask you to make a public report every two weeks on where we are on the street projects. And if, when we're in trouble, give us forewarning because I don't see a lot of progress. And on top of that, have we gotten any feedback since the positive meeting with DOT and Mr. Santoro about Steiner Place? Well, first I'll go through the update and then address the other things. For the 2016 road improvement project, um, it's on schedule and still on budget. The contract completion date is October 4th. Sunset Avenue sanitary sewer main is in progress and is at approximately 25%. Park Avenue sewers, curb and sidewalk are complete. Base paving is underway. Final paving is expected at the end of, of July. Cookman Avenue, Cookman Avenue sanitary sewer, curb and sidewalk are complete. Base paving and final paving is expected at the end of July. And Steiner Place sewers, curb, and sidewalk are complete. Base paving and final paving is expected by the end of July. That also is the, the New Jersey Transit issue, which I'll get into in, in a minute. And Dunlewy was completed in late May. Uh, I'll scroll down for Fourth Avenue. Contract was, contractor was issued a notice to proceed on 626. Contractor is expected is required to mobilize within 15 days on or around the 14th which is the 19th uh, there'll be notica notifications given to the property owners in the area um, and this was awarded to lucas brothers uh, through a public bid process heck street is in design um, which we're authorizing the final capital ordinance of this um, we anticipate bidding and fall a bidding and award in fall sewer work in the over the winter and the final paving in the early spring. The Springwood Avenue sanitary sewer <coughs> project, which is the jacking and boring underneath Springwood and Memorial, um, design is substantially complete. We're waiting now from all the other 
agencies that have jurisdiction, DEP, DOT, transit, the county, and Freehold Soil Conservation District. Once we get that, we'll actually have a time frame, but there's no time frame for their reviews, along with the reviews of uh, the utilities. And just want to see if there's anything else that should be stated. Um, the Springwood and Atkins Avenue traffic signal updates. The design is substantially complete. Um, I signed off on it, Manzella signed off on it, DPW signed off on it, and Michelle Alonzo signed off on it today. Um, one of the overhead lines might need some coordination with JCPNL, so TNM is going to, to start that work um, well, the, today. Concerning Fourth and Sunset, um, I spoke with the city engineer, Christine Ballard, and Jason Harzold, both of them today. We don't anticipate any problems at this point in time. If, if, if towards August it looks like we have to change the schedule around, we, we're going to change the schedule around. Um, Jay said that he would call the contractor. He was calling them when he left my office. Um, just to give them a heads up so you know as we're actively monitoring it we've known from the pre-construction meetings that the school area has to be done um, it's all going to be dependent on the weather hopefully it doesn't rain and during the day and we can get stuff blown out the sewer work is the hard work because you never know what you're going to find the milling and paving shouldn't be that difficult so if we have to we move to the school first and go from there so we don't anticipate as of now as long as the weather holds out everyone can work we should be okay. okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Matters by the city manager? Mm -hmm. Matters by the city attorney? I have nothing at this time. We will recess until 7 o'clock. Great. I do have a question for me. <laughs> Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Present. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Council Member Chapman? Please rise for a silent prayer moment of reflection. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 3, 2017, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. There's two proclamations listed on the agenda tonight. Both of those proclamations were done at outside events. We will now open... Can I have a motion to open the meeting to the public, please? Move it. Second. Second. Any member who wishes to come and speak, please state your name and address for the record, and each member of the public has three minutes. Keila Sinsky, Asbury Park. I, only, I told myself I stick to one subject tonight, so I'm sticking to traffic, speeding, accidents, I've been trying to have someone do crosswalks, yellow lines on the corners, stop signs, patrols, traffic control, anything. I've called a certain dumpster company several times one Sunday, or it was Saturday, and nothing, nothing helps. I've called bus companies. I've, I don't know why I have to do it myself. We have, don't have patrols around our area. We don't have traffic, and I don't know why that is. And it's dangerous. You know, 35, 40 miles an hour, it's 25 miles an hour. The noise is atrocious. You scream at each other outside when you try to talk. And it's been going on over there for years and years before I even moved to that side of town. So I would like to know why nothing's being done and when it's going to be done. Thank you. The police department has done additional patrols. Um, I've been monitor monitoring it with our GPS system throughout various times of the day. They've stationed um, cars in and around the area. I've actually set up our GPS system where I'll get an alert when a car is in within 750 feet of your house. Um, and there has been patrols. Concerning the painting, the striping, we do that at this time every year. Um, regretfully, we lost one of our two painters to an injury. He's going to be out for a little while. 
Um, so we're sort of behind the eight ball. We're trying to relocate staff. Um, you've mentioned previously in emails to us about bump outs. The city does not do bump outs, but we are looking at other traffic calming um, aspects. And the transportation manager has been looking at your street to see what else can be done. So okay, we good. have done radar, we have done patrols, we've done speed traps. Um, we've been out there, you might not have seen them, but the police department has been proactive. In okay, because I've been out there for seven hours straight and have not seen one patrol car. And uh, it has been on a weekend, it may be on a Friday, it's random. And some neighbors have seen nobody. If someone drives down, 99% um, of the time it's going as fast as everybody else. Nobody patrols. It used to be patrols, you go 20 to 25 miles an hour, you look around and you wave, and who cares if somebody's going fast behind you because they're not going to pass a patrol car. We, don't, we haven't had side uh, crossing walks over there in very few places for a number of years. And yellow, sign, yellow markers is, are non-existent. So on my street, and I know it's been like that for years, I know um, people have cars <coughs> end up on their front lawns, nobody's been killed, thank you. Um, their porches has been taken out. My house a few years, about 10 years back, has had their porch taken out. And so have other neighbors within the, the block of Central and Ridge. And something's gotta be done. Thank you. Thank you. And four way stop. Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Uh, I think uh, she's right about the traffic. It's, um, we had a major accident on 8th and Grand. It's people come up from Deer Lake Drive and they're speeding. And I very seldom see a police car in the neighborhood unless there's an accident, which there was this week, a very serious one. I don't know how many people got injured, but it was very bad. I don't know what you could do about it, but I think when the police ride around, which I guess they do, I never see them on 8th Avenue, uh, they're our eyes and ears, and they should be you know, monitoring all this. Why do we have to call when there's a truck on the street? There's still trucks on the street. But aside from that, I have some good news for you. <laughs> I, want, I came to a zoning board meeting last night, and I was really proud of them. They were very, they ask good questions. I, I don't know all the board members. In fact, I didn't know most of them. And I, I thought it was really a good meeting and, and you picked some really good people to be on the zoning board. I have to congratulate you on that. It's, I haven't been to one in a long time, but they were really good and they asked the right questions. So that's a good thing. I, I, I think you'll be happy with me tonight. <laughs> 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 Good evening, my name is Nina Sumlin, President of Westside Citizens United. I have invitations for each one of the city council members and the mayor. Um, our event is August 19th and I'm personally inviting everybody to come out um, and actually enjoy the fun that we're having. I've reached out to City Hall in regards to having some of um, the agencies that are in City Hall to bring out their resources also to participate in that day. So I'm just here to invite you guys to come out for our event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Move to close. Sheila Brazil, 1200 Jeffrey Street, Asbury Park, New Jersey. I'm called, um, hello everybody. Hope you're staying cool. Um, I wanna know, when are we gonna pay 4th Avenue? Cause it's like, they worked on the street like six months it seemed. I mean they say they was gonna pave it, but they've been done like for about maybe two months and it's not paved yet. So I would like to know because I could avoid going down 4th Avenue I go down fifth, then I come down because it's atrocious. So I would like to know when y'all gonna pay for the avenue before the, the winter get here. Thank you. 
We, we talked about that at the agenda meeting or well, it was a work session. Uh, the schedule start time is now July 19th. They're going to start at Ridge and work their way east. And that was a concern that we had, and that's a concern that we have every two weeks. And we've asked the city manager to keep us apprised of the progress, both of sunset, because school's opening soon, and fourth, where we don't want fourth to be started, and then all of a sudden we're in the middle of winter and we're plowing gravel because fourth isn't done. So the contract's been awarded. Pre-construction meeting's been done. It's a sewer replacement and a street replacement. So July 19th, weather permitted. Okay. Oh, yeah. While you bring up the school, um, my, I think we need um, speed bumps in front of the schools because, you know, Third Avenue is like a main street. The Asbury Park Sunset is a main street and the cars come down, it's like, it's crazy the way they drive so fast in front of the schools. You have signs out there, but people don't pay attention to them because I think they'll take the on uh, New Jersey Turnpike the way they drive down these streets. Because when I come, do come up Fourth Avenue, I drive 25 because I know the police sometimes have a habit of sitting there, but cars pass me on the right and they pass me on the left because I guess I'm going too slow because I'm doing the speed limit. So can we, not, you know, do, especially in front of the schools, we need speed bumps for these people to slow down. It would be nice because, you know, all kids are my kids. I didn't birth them, but they're still my kids. Thank you. Have a nice summer. Thank you. Sheila, do you have a location for yeah. this? Yeah. Yeah. For in the park? Perfect. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and <coughs> Council. Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue, the troublemaker about the beachfront. Uh, I was in a restaurant the other day and I met these two lovely girls from Tinton Falls who was raving about Asbury Park Beaches. <clears throat> However, they find it appalling and disgraceful, the beach etiquette that's going on in our city. It isn't something that I didn't predict. Um, I realize now that we have drinking on the beach and the decorum needs to be visited. I mean, I, I don't understand why we can't have some kind of ordinance or whatever that when they leave the beach, they're to put a cover up on and put shoes on their feet. Did we not recently or some time ago get sued because somebody ended up with a splinter that cost us thousands of dollars to the, somebody told me this. If I'm wrong, then correct me when I'm finished speaking. Bottom line is, you see them walking around shirtless in town because they don't need to wear anything when they leave the beach. Um, if you go to Ocean Grove, you don't find that. If you go to Long Branch, you don't find that. And I had said, and if the lady whoever called me the last time wants to call me again, I'm welcome for it. Um, seaside is, it, it's like, forget it. We're, we're, we're in trouble. We have the drinking on the beach and they come off the boardwalk and it's so unusual to see people in bathing suits and whatever walking the streets of our city. This is not a beach town, it's a city. And, this is, and these two girls are telling me about this and I had no idea that you know other people were having the same issue. I mean, I know why my, it's my issue because I was born and raised here and it's something I can't get used to. But you know, live and let live. But I just thought I might address that again. And there's an easy way to take care of this like they did years ago. You got somebody that's checking your badges, you just say, put your shoes on, put a cover up on. Men can wear t-shirts, what's wrong with that? And they're certainly getting enough money for these beautiful cover-ups in the store. That's all I have to say. Now, as far as um, my question about that, I mean, do we have any, Well, we can do anything, but right now, I mean, it's not on, and Louise, we've known each other for years, so I mean, I'm, don't take this like cavalier or anything. No. It's, it's not on like the top 10 of my list of things no, to, I know. to get through the summer. I know, but it doesn't seem that difficult, John. But I, I really haven't gotten that many complaints about it. Oh. So, okay. I mean. Okay. All I, right. I don't know how the rest of the
the council feels. I don't know if they've gotten complaints about it, but I, I haven't received any complaints about it. Okay. Well, it was, you know, I would have never thought of it because, like I say, live and let, live and let. I was sitting there with the gals who's sitting in the restaurant with me complaining about the etiquette on the beach. So, I mean, and she went on and on and on. And I went, oh, God, and they're, they're young girls, too. Okay. Okay, well, thank you. Hello, Mayor and Council. How's everybody doing? Jerry Scranton, Long Bread. Um, I saw on one of the lists that people are not happy about the cement pipes and stuff on the park that you come in from Allenhurst. Maybe because the park doesn't have a name, people think it's okay to put rocks and pipes there, but that shouldn't be done. There's other places to put pipes and ro rocks. The other thing is how are we doing with the panels on Convention Hall? How are we doing with the timetables on the redevelopment zones? I'd like to know how we're doing with the budget committee. We've got plenty of volunteers, I hope. Then um, someone mentioned to me at concerts, you got to do something to curb people throwing balls at the concert and stuff. Someone's going to get hurt throwing the ball back and forth could cause problems. Um, how are we doing with the department head? Are there minutes or reports being posted online so people can see how the department heads are curbing taxes? And then, since we're gonna have Asbury Day, which is a great idea, maybe it's time to be competing with other local towns and have a sandcastle contest. Maybe it's too late to do one for this summer, but maybe next year we should be a, get sponsors like Belmar does and make it a big deal during the week. Hopefully it won't rain, but I heard Belmore had theirs today. And then the other thing is, I don't mind watching Allen, Hurst, and Deal, policemen, Pochar, drivers for tickets, but if they can't follow the rules like we do, would any of you do a U-turn on the bridge with a double yellow line? That's what I witnessed at 6.50 tonight. And I don't think the cops should be setting bad examples. I mean, follow the rules. So I would like to know how we're doing with those timelines and the panels because they've been gone a long time. Thank you for your help. Can you anybody answer anything? With the panels are still in the works. Madison Marquette's not going to replace them until they're done doing their investigation of what has to be done as far as shoring up where the panels used to be. And so point blank. It's their nickel, it's, and we, we can't force them to do it. They're not in default of anything. We can't go down there and say, put them up tomorrow, else we would have done that several years ago. So it's their time frame. Uh, you want to write a letter to Madison Marquette and start a petition with them. That's totally up on, on you. As far as the pipes Excuse and me, rocks, one second, John. The panels are, are made already, or are they not designed yet? I'm sure they, no, they're not, they're not made. They're not designed. They're not anything. Oh, okay. I just. No. They're not even probably in the architecture. They're not even no, I just figured I asked. They're not in the drawing stage. It's, it's going to be, we'll meet with them in two weeks. We'll ask them again in two weeks, but I'm sure we're going to get the same answers. We're still doing work behind the panels. Until that work's done, we're not going to replace anything. Uh, as far as the pipes and rocks, and uh, I'll call it Pat Barrett Park or Waterworks Park or 7-Eleven Park as you come across the bridge. Uh, the reason the pipes are being stored there is because they're all the pipes that are being used on Sunset Avenue and on 4th Avenue reconstruction. And we thought better they'd be put in a park that's not being used by anything except somebody in the near future. It may be a two new tourist attraction, who knows? Or, or <laughs> left on a city street where they could be hit by a car. So that was our suggestion to store them there, where they're close to the work site, but they're off the street. And then you have about six other questions that I didn't get a chance and to well, write no, the, out. Um, what about the department head report? I've been asking for that for two years. And I think Michael has responded to that and will respond again. We have, uh, sorry, um, as I mentioned to you last meeting, we've had them posted on the website for a few months now. Um, for, I'm talking with the consultant again in two weeks for a meeting to try to add more information. Okay, and how's the budget committee working out? Well, right now it doesn't exist, but there's a resolution appointing members. Okay, not a pile of volunteers yet? 
I would the say it's more will than be a pile. Tonight. Okay, sounds good. Thanks That's a lot, guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Motion to close. Move to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes tonight. Executive session minutes of June 28, 2017. Minutes of June 28, 2017 for workshop. And regular session minutes of June 28, 2017. Have a motion to approve the minutes, please. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member uh, Clayton? Yes. <laughs> Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have uh, individual resolutions. The first one is 2017-229, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for 2017 municipal yeah, budget. Typo. I have corrected the typographic error that was made in the resolution. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-230, resolution improvement and payment of bills. Councilmember Chapman abstains from purchase orders 17-01527 and 17-00997. Have a motion to approve, please. Move it. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Happy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-231, resolution to credit sewer account for block 1005, lot 8, which is 145 Leeway Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-231. 232 resolution approving special event applications. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-233, resolution establishing a budget committee in and for the city of Asbury Park. The following appointments are being recommended to be made with the term expiring December 31st, 2017. The city manager or his appointment or his designee, council member Eileen Chapman, Barbara Kryzak, Robert Leitner, and Donna Vieira. To have a motion to approve this resolution, please. Move, Move it. it. Second. Any comments or questions? Council member Chapman? Can I vote on this? Yes, you can. Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-234, resolution supporting potential brown creek field remediation at the City of Asbury Park Firehouse. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Second. <laughs> Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-235, authorizing the award of contract regarding operations of seasonal concessions invo involving rental of stand-up paddle boards, kayaks, and other recreation devices to the public in a designated area of the Deal Lake. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-236, resolution authorizing change order number six for Springwood Avenue Park Professional Services. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. We have several uh, public hearing uh, ordinances on for tonight. The first one is Bond Ordinance 2017-28. Bond Ordinance providing for various parking utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth State, New Jersey, appropriating $1,500,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,500,000 in bonds or notes to finance the cost of part of, finance the cost thereof. Can I have a motion to open this bond ordinance to the public, please? Uh, Cindy. Before we make a motion, can I go back to the Springwood Avenue Park thing? Could you explain 
Could it be explained? Because I hear people saying, what, what is they doing? Could you explain what is happening there? The city had received an additional $23,000 from the Monmouth County Cons uh, Cons Cons Conservation. Conservation. Con Foundation. Conservation Foundation for additional plantings. Um, this authorizes the city's consultant on the project, um, suburban design engineers, to do the design of the plants where they're going to go. Obviously, pick the species, the bidding documents, uh, closeout documents, construction management, and then the as built plan that is required. Go back to bond ordinance 2017-28. Have a motion. Move it. Second. Does anybody wish to speak from the public? Might as well start explaining. <laughs> I want to hear if they want this or that. Okay. Let's just say if it's one. I'll read them around now. Eighth Avenue. 1.5 million for parking? What is that about? What are they going to improve? We're going to buy new meters. That's how much money they're going to cost? That's what they cost, Rita. Yeah, we go from 450000 to 1.5 million? Well, I don't know where you're getting 450000 Well, that was the original meters that are laying in the uh, city yard. No, they've been long gone, and that was probably like 30 of them compared to 130 of them. Oh, 130? Well, I'm, I'm shooting from the head. No, it's 100, 140, actually. 140. 1.5 million? There's $7,000 a piece. The cost is $5,600 for the meter for the extra solar panels, approximately another $600. we are anticipating $500 to pour each concrete, another $225 for shipping, and then we put in another 10% just for additional supplies as needed. There's 140 meters or so that are going to be, be purchased so that we can have two to five additional on stock at all times. Um, this, is, this has no impact on the parking utility budget because the previous meters, the 100 that were purchased, um, come off the books this year, so we just keep rolling them over. These meters were tested. Um, this is an international company. These are all over the world. Um, less moving parts. They fix all the problems that we've had with without being backlit, um, with batteries dying, as there's dual batteries. This is going to make the user experience here exponentially better um, at no change. And actually, there'll be a savings in the parking utility budget because we're changing the merchant account or the credit card processing, which we're anticipating saving anywhere from fifty dollars to $70,000 a year just on credit card purchasing. What happened to all the money in the parking authority? Why can't you use that? This is Why do you have to borrow? This is paying. This is being used from the parking utility. Um, just because of the sheer dollar amount, um, we don't have that sort of cash laying around within the parking utility. Additionally, this will also help us as we transition away from transitional aid. Um, we fully expect all the rating agencies to look at us, and this is going to demonstrate that we've been able to meet our obligations. The goal internally is to pay off half of this in the first year. Um, and then be able to just to finance the rest. We're looking at a financing rate of about 1 to 1.45% on a note. Um, this is a fantastic thing to do. It's going to help us across the board not only improve but save money with no budgetary impact whatsoever in the parking utility. Every time we get new meters, we want to use the old meters. This is the third set of meters we're getting. We, right? we, we, we buy new police cars. We're, we're going to auction them off and then we're going to repurpose approximately five to ten of them and place them along Ocean and Kingsley just dedicated because they're different colors just dedicated to people to buy um, beach passes which will help alleviate the lines on the boardwalk um, these meters will be Asbury blue so it's part of a general marketing aspect of it and it'll get people onto the beach faster and it's a faster transaction so that they'll be able to not spend their time looking for meters, but actually going to our establishments. So we're going to keep all of them? No, we're going to auction them off. To where? Who would want them? I don't know who's going to buy them.
you want to talk, you can get to the mic. Uh, I, I was just told I needed a mic. No, you got to. Yeah. You got to. State your name. I'm just a little curious. As Name and you. address, please, for the record. Uh, Samuel Stoya, S-T-O-I-A. Uh, uh, my address is 1507 3rd Avenue, Asbury Park, New Jersey. Got it. Um, I'm a little curious as to the, the, this constituent's question and your response as to why getting people on the beach faster is a good business entitlement. Is, is there anything that ties the rate of As that was an explanation you gave that piqued my curiosity. I, I came here for another purpose that I'm particular, but I, I couldn't help but miss that. I think it makes it more enjoyable. If I had to stand in a line for a half hour to get on the beach in five minutes, I think it would be a more enjoyable experience. Uh, I, I appreciate that genuinely, because I, I don't know that there are 30 minute lines. I haven't observed that in the other one. Uh, Fifth Ave has a line every yeah, weekend. Yeah. Is it 30 minutes or just well, a lot? I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, I, 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 don't, I don't stand there and time it, but I can tell you I, I sit at fifth every weekend, and every weekend there's a line. Uh, okay. And all the plan is is just to take the old meters that we've already paid for and just use them somewhere else. Okay. There's no, no, just, uh, that's piqued my curiosity. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no problem. Jerry Scrano, Long Branch. Um, when you go to the um, booth on the beach, can they use a credit card to buy passes? Or they didn't, I didn't know. I, so I thought that was a good idea with the machine. Some of them are. Uh, some can, some you can't. You can buy beach passes now from the existing meters, and the new meters will have that. Um, but as people get closer to the beach, we want them to be able to set, you know, we want people to use the parking app. They're, the new app that we have is phenomenal. They have a, a, an app that's just as good. We want them to be able to just keep moving. We don't want no, people no, to No, it's a good them. idea. I just, I didn't know you could use a, a car plastic at the booth, but I think the machine did not o Not in not all, all of the booths, Jerry, okay. just some. We want to keep people moving. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Second. I have a motion to adopt, please. The Move ordinance 2017-28. Move. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2017-29 bond ordinance providing for various sewer utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouthstown, New Jersey, appropriating 500,000, therefore and authorizing the issuance of 500,000 bonds or notes to finance the cost of the park. Cost of the, yeah, cost thereof. <laughs> Can I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Like, anybody like to be heard? Um, you explain it? Get up and ask the question, Rita. Yeah. Could you explain that? I, I thought we just had all those improvements done not too long ago. We'll, we'll explain it again. We okay. might as well go ahead. Thank you. No problem. This is from the sewer utility. Uh, there's no increase in taxation along with this one and the previous ordinance. I should mention that. Um, we anticipate no increase in the rate in the uh, sewer rates. This is so that we can reline some sewers. We're looking to ensure that we can um, complete the project of jacking and boring underneath Springwood Avenue where we have a 24 to 18 inch under the train tracks, 20 to back to 24 by Main Street sewer line. Um, that clogs up, especially with all the anticipated development along the Springwood Avenue corridor. Any money left over is going to be used to reline other sewers within the city that are old, cracking, and falling apart. Do you understand the 24, 18, 24? Yeah. On this side of the reader, on the west side of the <laughs> railroad tracks, the lines put in eight, ten years ago through the EDA money and Brian Grant were 24 inch lines. The lines put on this side of the railroad tracks, I 
again through that grant and the downtown improvement grant were 24 inch lines the line underneath the railroad track is an 18 inch line with Boston Way coming back online with the Michaels group coming back online with all the development on the west side we're already having sewer backups if we don't increase that line underneath the railroad tracks to 24 inch we're going to have sewers back up in all these new buildings and to raise the railroad tracks and bore underneath them is very expensive that's on springwood yes <coughs> yes it is a lot of money and it, the extra will be used to fix other bore the sewer lines at Asbury Park, which we're running into on redoing 4th Avenue, redoing Sunset Avenue, the, the terracotta original pipes from Mr. Bradley himself, and they're all collapsing. By the time we're doing the I and I at the sewer plant, we're pumping 10 million gallons of water instead of like 5 million gallons of sewage. So it, it, it saves in the long run also. Now some of the lines aren't that bad where they can be relined and sleeved, but some of them are totally collapsed and they're going to either go into the ground or go into the groundwater and go into the lake. So that's why they have to be replaced because of the original terracotta. Anybody else like to be heard? Motion opposed. Move it. Second. Second. Have a motion to adopt 2017-29, please. Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2017 30, ordinance, bond ordinance providing for various roadway improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, state of New Jersey, appropriating $1,650,000, therefore including a grant expected to be received from the New Jersey Department of Transportation in the amount of $297,000. $108 and authorizing the issuance of $1,650,000 bond or notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public, please. Move it. Second. Michael, you want to just explain it? <laughs> <laughs> the city received approximately $300,000 from DOT as part of the municipal aid program to repave Hex Street. This is a complete reconstruction of the road from the sewers to the asphalt. Um, this is, authorizes us to go up to 1.6 million. We're anticipating the project to come in at 1.3, but this allows for change orders because this road is one of the worst, if not the worst in the city. Um, we anticipate being able to bid this in the fall, start sewer work in the fall with repave in spring of next year. Opposed? Move it. Second. Motion to adopt ordinance 2017-30. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Resolution 2017-31, amending and supplementing Chapter 2, Administration, Section 2-47.7, Terms of Service for Sunset Lake Commission of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Have a motion to open this ordinance up to the public, please. Move, Move it. Second. Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close, please? Move it. Second. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 2017-31, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2017-32, an ordinance establishing a restricted parking space for use of handicapped persons at a property located at 1034 and a half Sewell Avenue, Apartment B, in the city of Asbury Park, and amending and supplementing Section 7-36 entitled Handicapped Parking of Chapter 7, Traffic of the Revised General Ordinances of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public, please? Move it. Second. Second. Seeing no one, can I have a motion to close? Close. Second. 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 Have a motion to introduce or, or adopt 2017-32, please? Move it. Second. 
Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Ordinance 2017-33, an ordinance authorizing the City of Asbury Park to convey an easement over certain property, over certain portions of the right-of-way area airspace adjacent to the property located at 700 Bangs Avenue, Block 3508, Lot 2. Have a motion to open this to the public, please. Move it. Second. Mayor and Council, Louise Murray, Christina Ford Grand Area. I didn't get a chance to read all of that. Could you just condense it for me, Michael, please? The easement that um, they're away. Mm -hmm. I can respond to you, uh, Louise. This is an airspace ordinance, um, and the area that is going to be subject to this is approximately 372 square feet of the air, um, and it um, is at the corner of Bangs Avenue and Bond Street in connection with a new building, which was approved by resolution of the uh, city's Zoning Board of Adjustment, and um, in the resolution, there was a provision that uh, the applicant had to come to the city council for any encroachments into the airspace. And um, as you may know, the city has had other requests of this nature in the past in the CBD, and those requests are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. And the council has reviewed this, has received recommendations from staff, and is. Uh, proceeding this evening to grant the applicant's request for the encroachment into the airspace. It's not going to restrict the use of the public uh, sidewalks adjacent to the building. It's merely airspace. So. It's a new building to be constructed. 700, 700 Bangs, Bangs Avenue. Avenue. It's at the corner of Bangs and Bond. Motion to adopt ordinance 2017-33, please. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman. Yes. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2017-34, ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, amending traffic and parking regulations, Chapter 7, Section 20. This is for the heck one way. Have a motion to open up the meeting to the public, please. Move, Move it. it. Second. Second. Rita Miranda Wake Avenue. Could you explain that a little bit? This makes Heck Street between Cookman and Lake one way going south, which yeah. the rest of Heck is until you get to, there used to be two ways. So now we're making it one way so there can be parking on the opposite side of the street. And originally we were going to do it one way going north and we got a petition from the people living at Wesley Grove requesting that we continue making it going south. So we scrubbed it for a month and reintroduced it. So it makes heck between Cookman and Lake one way going south. So there could be parking on the west side of Heck Avenue. Okay. Heck yeah. between Cookman and Lake. And given the width of the street right now, if it's two-way, there's not enough room for there to be metered parking. But if you turn it into one way, it creates enough room for us to have metered parking on that area of heck. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Motion to close. Move, Move it. it. Have a motion to adopt ordinance 2017-34. Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to adjourn? Move it. Second. Do you want this back? What? No. Oh, don't stop. The there was an open public adjourn. comment portion at the beginning. Yeah, we're going to adjourn. I was aware of that. And I, was, I came from up north New Jersey and I was talking about this. And no. when the mayor asked me to come to this meeting, he responded to my email. I'm leaving. So let's the mayor, if you want to entertain an additional public speaker, it's up to the mayor and council. Uh, we're adjourned. We adjourned already. We yeah, adjourned we adjourned. Already. Well, we can unadjourn for three minutes and give 
Mr. Stowe, three minutes of the microphone since he. I generally You were stuck in traffic. Three minutes won't kill us. I, I appreciate the indulgence. Uh, so, <coughs> Sam Stoyer, 1507 Third Avenue. Uh, I came to the meeting tonight to ask the City Council, the Mayor, and the Business Administrator to consider passing an ordinance to prohibit smoking on our beaches. In the last five years in particular, the volumes of people that are visiting Asbury Park for our beaches entertainment has just increased dramatically each year. The momentum is, is unusually large. As there was a concern expressed about the length of time it takes people to get onto the beach, there's also a concern generally as to how much people are going to enjoy the beach uh, if it's not well maintained. Smoking is considered pollution. Uh, people who smoke are leaving large amounts of cigarette and cigar butts on the beach. We have more families bringing their children to the beach who are now picking up these cigarette butts and they're just enjoying the beach less. You're finding cigarette butts in the ocean. There are many neighboring towns who have recently passed legislation or, or ordinances prohibiting smoking on the beach or at the very least limiting smoking to particular sections. The state has prohibited smoking in state parks and beaches. Asbury is now a destination place. There are huge various types of investors who are spending lots of money on press, on, on, on public relations, attracting more people to Asbury. It's bringing in a great deal of revenue. It is not attractive to have a beach where there's legions of people smoking. If people are complaining about it anecdotally. Uh, I respectfully ask council, the mayor, the deputy mayor, and the business administrator to give serious consideration to passing an ordinance prohibiting smoking on the beach. I don't know whether this is something that's been bandied around in the past, um, but it's making my experience on the beach less and less comfortable, and I was particularly inspired by a quote from the mayor uh, of a nearby town in Belmar who advised that his uh, city passed the his ordinance sua sponte without the initiation uh, of, of the constituents by petition, and they're thrilled with the results. Their beach is cleaner, uh, that they've seen absolutely no loss in revenue. Both the constituents and the tourists of that town are much happier with a cleaner beach. Thank you. I appreciate you coming. I think you make some valid points. I think it's something that we don't have. Your time's up. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I don't think we're going to be able to act on that this year, but I think it's something that we should definitely look into seriously before next season. I'm sorry, just one more thing. Would it be more viable if I just got a petition signed and passed? Or is it something that the city council is going to give consideration to to be passed in the future? I don't expect it to be passed immediately, but what I want to know is the, I, I give you my word, this is something we'll seriously look into as something like if you want, we'll form a committee be it between I, 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 I'm not sure how I stand. I know smoking is bad. Doctors approve of that. I mean, there's no problem with that. Do we go directly from smoking to no smoker and do we start slowly and have a smoking area? I think so. The devil's in the details. I think it's something that will work out before next season. Thank you. Right, but I mean, we're into the middle of July. By the time we did two readings, two ordinances, and two, it, it would be September anyway. So it's something you brought to our attention. I agree with you, it's an important issue, and you have my word, it will be looked into. Okay, thank you. And please stay in touch with us all. John, could you put this on the Mayor's Wellness Committee? No. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to yes. re-adjourn. Uh, re <laughs> Second. All in favor? All opposed? Sure, I guess it is.